Oh no! I'm a big intense overlander and I'm way out in the boonies. My 80 liter fuel tank is done, but lucky for me, I've got this seven liter snowmobile spare with me. How do you do, fellow folks? This is the 2024 Chevy Silverado ZR2 Bison. It's an inch and a half taller than the regular ZR2. Today, we are gonna off-road this truck. Goofy Overland cosplay and all. This is pretty well as big as you can get in a Chevy pickup, but it earns its place. How does it do that? Well, it does have that go-to cheat code. This thing is running Markham's own Multimatic DSSV. Those dynamic suspension spool valve shocks are phenomenal. We have praised these things in everything they've been in. They are motorsport proven. They've been used in Camaros, now used in the serious off-road stuff. The very fine control that these dampers afford is just unparalleled on today's market. They are so good that the Ferrari Puro Sangue has now adapted this system. That car doesn't even have sway bars anymore. It just depends on the Multimatic setup. It's brilliant stuff. The ride over this bumpy, oscillating, unimproved road is just fine. It's not as soft as you would get in a hyper mushy Ford Raptor. You do feel a good bit more and not necessarily in an ideal way. The Raptor would be more comfortable and subject itself to less force. But this feels significantly more poised. It's not just rebounding softly and smoothly. It's moving purposefully. That Bison name seems well placed. <laughs> Up front, of course, we've got a V8. In this case, the 6.2 liter. Nowadays, those things are running GM's dynamic cylinder deactivation. It will deactivate certain cylinders in different patterns depending on load and need. That certainly helps things somewhat, but the ZR2 here is far from thrifty. Even before the bigger Bison upgrade to the ZR2, and then of course, all the stuff we've got on the back here, you're looking at ratings of 16.8 liters per 100 kilometers city. Go on the highway and you're looking at an optimistic 14.1. Those balance out to a reported 15.6 combined. Just for perspective, even before I started getting really silly, I was running about 17s combined. This isn't actually too far off, but it's not exactly light on the wallet either. For that cost, of course, you do get power though. 420 horsepower and more importantly, 460 pound-feet of torque. Now, this is a lot of truck, you do need it, and it still feels kinda heavy underway, but it feels well proportioned even with the drag of that big goofy tent on the back. Fortunately for ZR2 buyers, that should prove about as much as you need, because much like the Raptor and the TRX, this soft off-road focus setup is not really built for towing in the same way. You're not gonna need 911 pound-feet of torque because the ZR2 is only rated to tow 6,000 pounds out back. And in the case of this here Bison, that number goes down to five and a half thousand. That's still enough to pull a race trailer, but it is less than you can pull even behind a Toyota Tacoma. Now those Raptor and TRX likenesses are very important here because this really is thus far GM's sort of adult answer to those off-road trucks. Now, whereas those trucks have largely kept their garnishes to sticker packs, GM has gone a little beefier with this. To build up this special edition Bison, they've gone to American Expedition Vehicles, or AEV. We've driven Silverado AEVs previously here on driving, and they do some really impressive kit. For starters, this thing here is armored out the wazoo underneath. And not just the usual stuff, you've also got some unexpected protection too. The fuel tank of course is protected, but so are the diffs, the transfer case. A whole bunch of the central drive shaft area is entirely enclosed and protected. Bottom yourself out on a sand dune, like I might have done, and apart from having to dig everything out from under it, you're pretty well secure. And it's not just their visual presence either, it's the boron. You see, GM claims that the steel that they've made those armor plates out of comes in three and a half times stronger than equivalent stamped high strength steel. It's really tough stuff. Front and rear, these AEV trucks are bookended by proper steel bumpers. They're just an eighth of an inch thick, but they're really reassuring to have. You do sacrifice that little foot pocket that's really handy for stepping into the regular Sierras and Silverados at the back corner, 
but up front there is actually a little step on each corner. Helpfully too, just below the step on the left side, you've got a port right there ready for your 120 volt block heater plug-in. Cooler still though, are those cast recovery points. Look at these bad boys, these are so chonky. Adding to the AEV kit list on this truck are the 18 inch wheels down there, but they're only wrapped in 33 inch Wranglers on a truck this big that's lifted this high? They look small. What are you doing? You can get 37s on the Raptor. 35 should be a basic expectation on this. And I suspect most people are gonna see that and upgrade at some point. Now with all of that Bison AEV headline stuff out of the way, there's still more star power here because the excellent and really purposeful feeling ride that we're getting here is thanks to those local grown Multimatic DSSV 40 mil dampers. Now those Multimatic bouncies are well appreciated at both ends, but especially so out there at the rear because well, things are modern multi-link now, this is still a proper pickup with a solid rear axle there. Those dampers manage it well. And in the middle there, as up front, are electronically controlled locking diffs. This is a very good thing, obviously, especially for an off-road focus truck. And goofing off there in the sand, trying to throw up tails. Yeah, lock the rear, leave it in two wheel. It's having a blast. Getting off-road and then eventually getting stuck, it's reassuring. However, as I found, they don't always want to cooperate. I was a little disappointed yesterday off-roading when the front locker didn't want to engage. It was pretty frustrating because just being controlled by a little electric button here, there wasn't really a good way of being able to tell why. This isn't like a classic rig where you can feel out through the lever whether things are engaging or binding or whether you need to rock back and forth. It just, uh, infotainment just said no and Cool, I guess I'll just go myself. Ended up jamming some logs into the rears and used those traction boards up front where I really, really needed it. And we got out just fine, but I'm a little disappointed in that. And also disappointing is industry analysis doesn't point to the brightest prospects for the reliability of this thing just in general. Consumer reports based on data from 21 to 23 Sierra and Silver Autos anticipates a reliability rating of one out of five for this here 24. That's not just below average, that's pretty glum. So then, where would I put my money? Well, my off-road rig was designed in the 1970s. I've got slightly more traditional tastes, but riding over moguls like these, I really appreciate these DSSV dampers. Man, this thing rides so well held up against contemporary competition, that's tricky. This is a more grown up feeling vehicle than the Ford Raptor. The Raptor rides easier if feeling a little more unruly and that's before you get to the whole 700 horsepower part. Just day to day too, the 10 speed auto in this thing easily trances that Ford setup. Against the TRX, it's a tough call because those two feel even farther apart. The TRX is a goofy plaything. You can put that spare wheel Baja style in the back of that thing. This here Bison, however, feels like you can also take it to work. Having grown up in a trade family with a Quigley lifted E350 for off-road job sites, I've got a lot of respect for that. This is a proper and really serious truck with an emphasis on the serious. It's not trying to be brash. It's not trying to be silly. You don't really hear the 6.2 in this. It just quietly works and chugs along. Yes, it's styled up a little bit, and that cosplay with those useless jugs on the back is kind of goofy. Also, I had to bring my own shovel. Come on, guys. But there's no silly sticker pack trying to make this look more exciting than it is. It's certainly big and unwieldy in the city, and I feel kind of rude driving it in town. But it doesn't have big, boxed-out, creatine tub fenders like the TRX and Raptor R. This thing just fills itself out maturely and respectably. Yes, I wish it had bigger wheels. Yes, I worry a little bit about that whole Consumer Reports projection. And yes, to be honest, I still wish that engine brought a little more sense of occasion for that massive fuel bill it drags out of you. But this is a nice truck. Now, I've been focusing on this rough and tumble stuff. 
But if you want to know more about the Silverado and Sierra, you can check out our full reviews of those trucks, including a lot more on-road impressions and GM's new interiors, which it's worth noting are improving quite a bit and are really rich in hard buttons. We really appreciate this GM. Thank you for listening. I'm Al Alder for driving.ca. Thank you for riding the trail with me this morning. Yeah.